on your back. You are going down. You are out for the count. And they already put it in their mind that that's it. It's over. It is done with him. But they should have hung around a little while longer. Because we got a God that has the ability to come in the ninth hour. God can come in when everybody else have left out. God can come in when the doctor said there's nothing else that can be done. Anybody know a God that can show up and a God that can show out. God that can turn your situation around. We serve that kind of God. And so they said, surely... Now that our father is dead, Joseph is going to repay us for what we have done unto him. The evil that we have done unto him. But Joseph says, and it's so profound, he says, am I in the place of God? In other words, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Am I in the place of God? Surely what you did was horrible. Surely what you did to me was evil. You meant evil unto me. You meant to destroy me. You tried to break me. You tried to do away with me. But what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Yeah, you tried to break me, but God built me. You tried to destroy me, but God used it for my destiny. You, you tried to take me out, but God took me up. And there's somebody that's listening to me. You can shout right now because they tried to take you out, but you're still here. Here's the thing. Joseph says, I'm not going to harm you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to feed you and your children. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done, but here is proof when you've gotten to the place where God has healed that broken place. When you get to the place where you have the power, the position, and the permission to pay back the one that tried to destroy you. But instead of paying them back, you bless them. Instead of taking them out, you help them. That's an indication that God has healed something in you where you can bless the one that tried to take you out. And I thank God that God allowed me to live long enough that he can do a work in my heart that I can bless my haters. Anybody out here, God has put you in a position now that you have been elevated to the point where you over, that you're higher than those who tried to break you. I wonder did what they do change who you are. Did their breaking make you bitter or make you better? Did their attack change your attitude? Or at you are, are you at the place right now where you say, God, I understand what they did to me. But they didn't understand that I had a God working in the background. That though what you did tried to kill me, but my God was working to change something in my life and put me in a position where I can bless you. You ain't healed until you're ready to hate to help your haters. Let, let me say that again. You are not healed until you're ready to help your haters. If you're still hating on your haters, then God ain't finished working on your heart. You got to get to the place where you can feed the one that stole your meal. That you can bless the one that tried to curse you. And when you get to that place, you ought to be able to open up your mouth and throw your hands up and tell God, thank God. Can I, can I be human? For just three seconds? Can, can, I, can I just get in the flesh for three seconds? I thank God that God didn't kill all my haters. Because I needed somebody to be in the audience. When God prepares a table before me in the presence of my haters, I need somebody to see me walk 
in my stuff. I need somebody to be able to say, look at what God. That's what you do to your haters. You smile and you wave at them. And you tell them it was because of you. Your lies. Your treachery. Your hate. Your evil is the reason why I'm You broke me. You broke me into pieces. But I had a God that has a way of scooping up broken pieces. And he put me back together again. I don't look like what I used to look like. But I'm something different. I'm something better. Sure, I got some open places now because I'm not always put together. But guess what? God still has the ability to use broken stuff to do amazing stuff. And I thank God that God is a God that can take broken stuff and put stuff back together again. Tell your devil you tried to break me, but you didn't realize that I had a God on my side. And God put me in this operating room and God made me stronger. God made me better. God made me more loving. God made me more forgiving because of what you caused in my life. <laughs> Ain't no stopping us now. Huh? If I survive all of what I've been through, the hatred, the molestation, the lies and the bad treatment, folk walking out and abandoning me, days when I didn't know how I was going to eat, how I was going to pay my bills, when I done got kicked out of a house, had my car repossessed, couldn't be able to pay my medicine, but God made a, God made a way. Anybody know God will make a way out of no way. And here it is, I'm going home, stand to your feet. And if God did it before, that, that the tuna, if God did it before, I need about six people to go ahead and shout that if God did it before, God can do it again. He can do it again. If he did it in his life, he can. What? mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve Joseph says but as for you you meant it for evil against me but God meant it for good in order to bring about as it is this day to save many people alive Verse 21, I didn't read it. Let me read it as we go home. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And look what Joseph did. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. When God has done a work in your heart, and a work in your life, you let go of the anger from the past. You forgive and you move on. And remember, forgiveness is not about the one who hurt you. It's about you that they won't continue to hurt you and you let them go and leave them in the past. And then, if your past your path should cross somewhere in the future or somewhere in your now presence you ain't got to feel some kind of way you let that be between them and their God go ahead and speak to them help them if you can because usually if somebody despise you that much 
there's something broken in their lives. Because hurt people hurt people. And sometimes God, sometimes God is going to use you. <laughs> I'm not going to like this. Sometimes God is going to use you to be a blessing to the one who hurt you. And you got to be in a place with God and you got to be a place in your heart where you can actually love that person and, and, and care for that person through love and compassion. And I'm telling you, God can heal you that way. And I know there's somebody in here, you're saying, Pastor, you don't, you don't know what they've done. You don't know how they scarred me. I, no, I don't know, but I, I, I know what pain feels like. I, I know what abuse feels like. I know what abandonment feels like. I know, I know how it feels when somebody that should love you is the one that's trying to hurt and destroy you. I, I know, I don't know your particular pain, but I know pain. And there's no way I could serve you as your pastor if God hadn't done a work in my heart where I can do for you what he did for me. What did he do for you, pastor? He looked past my faults and he supplied my need. And when God puts you in a position to be his hands, in the life of individuals who hurt you, you let God use you. You let God use you. You show them that there's a, there's a greater way. Because you get to the place where you realize that when I look back over my life, though you meant it for evil, I can see clearly now that the rain is gone. I know now that God had purpose. And the only reason God allowed me to stay in the pain was he's going to use that to fulfill the purpose. Maybe there's somebody. Maybe there's somebody today. Maybe you don't, you don't, you don't have a relationship with this God. And you've been trying to do this on your own. When I talk about this kind of forgiveness, this... This kind of stuff is almost impossible to do on your own. You need some supernatural power to do this. You need the Holy Ghost working in your life. You need the Lord working with you. Maybe you're out there, you, you never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. You know you're not saved. You know you're not saved. You know you have never accepted God. Though you've been coming to church, but you never accepted him, today is your day. If you're out there right now and you want to be saved, you want the Lord to live in your heart and to begin to do a great work in your life. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and profess with your mouth that God loved you enough to set Jesus to die on the cross, you shall be saved. Is there one? If you're out there and you want to give your life to the Lord, just step out. Step out in the aisle and make your way to the altar. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just look straight ahead because that's where God is going to be taking you. Into your future, into your destiny, into eternity. Is there one? Is there one? Maybe you're out there, you're already saved. You're already giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, but you need a church home. Can I tell you, church is a tool that God has used to heal me and sometimes church get a bad rap because most of the time all we talk about is the bad people in church but every now and then we need to talk about the good people we've met folk who walk with you folk who have been there with you when you were in the hospital folk who called and came by you folk who celebrated with you folk who cried with you folk who hug you folk who speak to you every day we ought to celebrate the fact that we have more for us than against us in this house maybe you need a home if that's you you want to unite with the word of change and make this your church make us your family we would love to have you Make your way to the altar. That's you. You want to join this church? Come on, come on. You don't have to visit another Sunday. This is your Sunday. 
carved out just for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there one? Maybe there's somebody you, you need to bring something to the altar. Maybe you need to bring somebody to the altar and just leave them at the altar. I say, God, though they meant it for evil, God, you meant it for good. And today, God, I want to leave it. God, I want to be totally healed from it. I want to be able to enjoy the blessing that you've given me. And God, sometimes I can't focus on my present blessing because I keep focusing on my past hurts. But God say today you can just drop it and leave it. You can leave it and let me take care of it. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's pray together. Come, let's pray together. He's gone to fulfill every promise to you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Yes, sir. Because of what he said, he will do. Somebody need to hear that. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Yeah. Everybody say, oh, 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 Come on, let out a yell one time. Oh, Sometimes you can release it. Oh, 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 oh. he's able. Whatever you need, he's able, he's able, he's able. Say, oh, 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 he's able. Help me say, hey, yeah, say, oh. hand with someone close to you. Life is a saga. There's a beginning. There's a middle. And there's an end. The only part we have a whole lot of control of today is that middle. On your tombstone, there's going to be two dates. Your beginning and your end. And what divides those two dates are a little hyphen. That's all we have. That little line. But in that time, you can make a great difference. In the lives of those you love, even in your own life, may this moment of your life be the best moment of your life may you get locked into now and not get tripped up about yesterday father we thank you we thank you God that when the enemy came in like a flood you lifted up a standard against him though they tried to break us God God you did not allow it for greater is he that's on the inside of us than he that is in the world. And because of you, God, because of that power that's working on us and in us, we were able to survive. 
And God, we did not survive and you did not allow us to get through just to be. But God, you had purpose on our lives and in our lives. And God, may we find ourselves in that purpose. May we be the kind of people that you can use. May we not allow our past to hinder our future. May we be people who forgive quickly. May we focus on you, God, and not on our enemy. May we be able, God, to lift up holy hands. May we be able to worship you in spirit and in truth for being the God that brought us out, for being the God that kept us in the midst of the fiery furnace, for being the God that pulled us through the flood waters, for being the God that kept us even through a global pandemic. God, we thank you. Thank you, God, that the enemy tried, but he failed. We thank you that we have a conquering God. And because we serve a conquering God, God, we can celebrate you because we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And we now can do all things through him. Bless your people. Help them now, God, to release themselves from the anger, from the unforgiveness, from the hurt, from the thing that scarred them in their past. And may their loads be a little lighter. May the sun shine again. May the sun shine again in their lives, God, that they would know that tomorrow is a brighter day. And God, we thank you. Forgive us, God, for our sins. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for his obedience. Thank you for the word, God. Thank you for your church. Father, bless now your people. May this be the beginning of their journey. And may they be able to see, God, that great is he that's in us and he that is in the world. May they walk in this truth. May they walk in the anointing that's over their lives. May they now, God, be a blessing to somebody else because you've been a blessing to them and been a blessing to me. Now, God, bless what we've given. Bless what we shall give. Break it and multiply it. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of your precious Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide on each and every one of us henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have an amazing week.